Happy Halloween, everybody, and Tony here with my tribute to Carlos and the Count from Power Rangers Turbo, which aired on Fox Kids on November 13, 1997. This was directed by Lawrence S. Simeone, and it was written by John Fletcher. While I do agree with the majority in stating that Power Rangers Turbo got way better after TJ, Carlos, Ashley, and Cassie replaced Tommy, Adam, Tanya, and Kat, respectively, as the red, green, yellow, and pink Turbo Power Rangers and joined alongside Justin as the current blue Turbo Power Ranger, I argue that Power Rangers Turbo would have been way better if TJ, Carlos, Ashley, and Cassie were the red, green, yellow, and pink Turbo Power Rangers from the very beginning, as well as Justin being the blue Turbo Power Ranger from the very beginning. It would have also been more satisfying to have had the Zeo Rangers have a way more proper send-off from Turbo, a Power Rangers movie back in 1997, and even give the floor to the new breed of Power Rangers consisting of TJ, Justin, Carlos, Ashley, and Cassie with a Blue Sentinel and the Phantom Ranger joining alongside them respectively as the 6th and 7th Rangers, let alone as the Extra Rangers or Ranger Allies. I could even go on and on and on about how contentious the history of Power Rangers Turbo was. What, with Jason David Frank no longer feeling like he wants to do any more Power Rangers until he ended up returning for some anniversary specials because he wanted to do other more mature action-y projects and Catherine Sutherland almost feeling the same way as JDF, but also Nakia Baris and Johnny Young Bosch still wanting to stay on board. But it seems like it was JDF and Catherine Sutherland who decided that enough was enough and they decided to retire their roles for the new breed of Power Rangers actors until they came back for a couple of Power Rangers anniversary specials. I could even go on about the overly complicated history of Hilary Shepard Turner starting off as Diva Talks, but because of her maternity leave, she ended up being temporarily replaced by Carol Hoyt, who also played Demetria, but it also took until episode 20 that Hilary Shepard Turner ended up returning as Diva Talks, for the remainder of not only Power Rangers Turbo, but also Power Rangers in Space. I could even state that Tommy's, Adam's, Tanya's, and Kat's presence during the first half of Power Rangers Turbo, let alone Turbo, a Power Rangers movie from 1997, almost felt like it was Power Rangers running on autopilot. But I would be here all day. Because when TJ, Carlos, Ashley, and Cassie took over as the red, green, yellow, and pink Turbo Power Rangers, this was when Power Rangers Turbo started to improve and things started to take off from here, especially when it was the precursor to Power Rangers in Space that managed to change the face of what Power Rangers was and what would become of the franchise thanks to Power Rangers in space regaining steam and regaining in acclaim. And if you remember my look back and ways that I would fix Wait and See, I stated that Power Rangers Turbo did seem to have a bit of a bad rap as one of the least favored of the Saban era seasons of Power Rangers. And most people have blamed it on the fact that it was essentially Power Rangers running on autopilot. And I do also feel that Tommy, Adam, Tanya, and Kat were slowly starting to serve their purpose. And it almost felt like they were just there for the ride. But when TJ, Carlos, 
Ashley and Cassie came along and replaced the four aforementioned rangers, this was when things started to be a lot better. And I dare not forget about the disservice that happened to Rocky, but that's a whole nother story. At least Power Rangers Turbo has its fair share of great episodes, and Carlos and the Count is one of them. This is without a doubt one of the best episodes that Turbo has ever produced, not just in terms of having TJ, Carlos, Ashley, and Cassie join alongside Justin in their current roles as Rangers, but also because of the fact that this was full of thrills, tension, and a whole lot of action that made me as the viewer thoroughly invested from start to finish, and I had a grand old time just watching all the action happen and even prove itself to be one of the best, let alone the greatest episodes I have ever seen from Power Rangers Turbo, a season that unfortunately ended up having a bit of a bad rap because of various reasons, ranging from Power Rangers being on autopilot to certain contentious feelings that people had for Justin Stewart, who I will easily, easily defend until my dying day. And this also has one of my favorite monsters from all the Power Rangers rogues gallery, Count Nocturne, voiced by Tom Fawn. And his presence is menacing, thrilling, and truly exciting, all thanks to that combination of dark charisma, as well as that bravado that he has when he attacks his victims, especially when they are at their most vulnerable. But before Count Nocturne strikes terror on Angel Grove, Vulcan Skull host a monster movie film festival in which tonight's feature is all about vampires. This makes Diva Talk strike an idea after Elgar is seen capturing lunar bats. She captures one of the lunar bats with her tongue, almost like a frog catching a fly or any other bug, and one of the lunar bats turns into Count Nocturne, in which Diva Talks is absolutely ecstatic to have him wreak havoc on Angel Grove. We get a tender moment of Justin and Carlos being absolutely brotherly with each other, and I do love this tiny moment that is so cute between Carlos and Justin. I also felt a lot more warmth and a lot more brotherly love between Carlos being this impulsive yet caring big brother figure to Justin's inquisitive and bright-eyed younger brother figure, almost akin to Bill and Russell from Fat Albert and the Cosby Kids, what with Carlos being the Bill to Justin's Russell. And Roger Velasco and Blake Foster do have good chemistry, almost as if they were like brothers from other mothers on screen. As soon as both Carlos and Justin bid their good nights, Carlos walks alone in the park, but something's not right. It's all quiet until he ends up being attacked by the Piranatrons. He does everything in his power to fight all the Piranatrons with all of his strength, all of his courage, and all of his speed and aggression. And it's totally fantastic seeing Roger Velasco doing his thing and doing his stunts just to use his martial arts skills and use that great fight choreography to beat up some Piranatrons, and he did so with a lot of aplomb, a lot of brilliance, and of course, physical flexibility and physical fortitude. So I have to give major props to Mr. Velasco for what he was able to muster as Carlos Varierte. Although Carlos has fought bravely, he ends up being captured by Count Nocturne and ends up succumbing to his bite which Bulk and Skull also witness, but don't do anything to stop Count Nocturne from hurting Carlos. Count Nocturne has done his dirty deed, 
and Carlos is still feeling that pain from that bite. What happens the next day is quite fascinating to me because we see Carlos in a sort of black and green getup, especially when he wears that black leather jacket. And what I've noticed about Carlos's style after he gets bitten, especially when he has those sunglasses on, is that the all black attire seems to foreshadow his upcoming tenure as the Black Space Ranger from Power Rangers in Space. Now that is quite foreshadowing of what will occur much later, especially after Turbo's ending. And if you know how shocking that particular ending was, you'll probably be aware of it. Ashley starts to realize how peculiarly Carlos has been acting in terms of his aloofness and in terms of him not really feeling like himself considering that he's been complaining about his eyes burning when he's exposed to sunlight or any form of light. Even Ashley continues to be chummy with Carlos when she invites him to a blood donation event. Carlos accepts and what I also like about this scene about Carlos feeling so strange when he's rubbing his eyes and yawning as his fangs are about to be exposed and his eyes become red, they just show you the thrill and the absolute fright that I obtained when I saw Carlos metamorphosizing into a vampire. Even Bulk and Skull are terrified at what is going on, much to Justin's bewilderment. And eventually, Mr. Kaplan catching both Bulk and Skull in the hallways and even trying to send them to detention, which also shows you right there that this is one of those moments in which Power Rangers was on autopilot. Mr. Kaplan still being the stern principal as he's always been and sending Bulk and Skull to detention even though they've already graduated. Justin also tries to get the full skinny of what's been happening with Carlos, why he's been acting so aloof, why does he end up averting the sight of garlic, and why on earth he's wearing those sunglasses. And Justin believes that Carlos might end up turning to a vampire. And he does his fair share of research to see if all of his suspicions are true. TJ and Cassie also intercept and realize that there might be something wrong with Carlos. Even Ashley continues to be unaware of all the strange changes that are going on with him. But Diva Tox is not one to give up without a fight as she orders Rygog to have the Piranatrons attack TJ, Cassie, and Justin. And joining alongside the Piranatrons is Count Nocturne. I do question why on earth this fight scene ended up being shot in daylight when it should have been naturally shot in the hour in which Count Nocturne is at his strongest, which is nighttime. But that would be nitpicking because this fight scene with Count Nocturne and the Piranatrons against TJ, Cassie, and Justin was absolutely brilliant. It was just as amazing seeing Selwyn Ward, Patricia Jali, and Blake Foster demonstrate their martial arts skills and do so with strength, beauty, and absolutely amazing agility. It's also a testament as to why I think Justin needs a whole lot more love and way less bashing just because of what? Just because he's a kid ranger? Come on! There was Ko from Dairenja, and there was Riki from Orenja, and nobody seemed to bat an eye? Come on, this is Double Standards 101! Anyway, Justin proves himself to be just as capable of a fighter and just as capable of a warrior when he ends up fighting against Count Nocturne and shows that he is absolutely fearless. Even when Count Nocturne threatens Justin that he will bite him and become one of his slaves, Slaves, Justin never gives up and continues to fight tooth and nail. So Justin really does deserve a whole lot more respect. It also helps that TJ and Cassie manage to help Justin dodge that otherwise fatal bullet. And Justin has finally deduced what on earth has occurred. Count Nocturne bit Carlos and therefore made him end up turning into a vampire. Justin's deduction proves to be correct because after Ashley invites Carlos to lunch, Carlos ends up sneaking behind her, attempting to bite her neck. But luckily, 
Ashley was able to dodge a bullet when TJ, Cassie, and Justin show up. They confront Carlos about what happened between him and Count Nocturne, and why he's behaving strangely from averting garlic to eventually not even having a reflection. Even Ashley is shocked to see that Carlos does not have his reflection. The remaining four rangers try to convince Carlos to come with them to the command center so that they can help him. But Carlos refuses and morphs into a bat, thus flying away. Ashley has an idea where he's going to, considering that his vampire transformation is at full bloom and full force. The Blood Donation Center. Carlos tries not to be too conspicuous about his intent to want blood, but his urges grow, and Bulk's and Skull's fears have grown a lot more, much to the annoyance of Lieutenant Stone. And I also love Skull's various descriptions of vampires. They are absolutely creative and absolutely hilarious. And I have to hand it to Jason Narvi for handling such Shakespearean language and doing so in such a hilarious fashion, but one that shows that he is serious about his craft. And I just had such a ball watching him do his thing and do so with a whole lot of brilliance and a whole lot of joy. That is just how much that moment was imprinted in my mind and in my soul and in everything that I am. But just as Carlos is about to have a taste of human blood, TJ and Ashley capture him, teleport to the command center, where Alpha 6 is waiting for them because he has an antidote in store that is extracted from one of the lunar bats. Carlos does not end up drinking that potion, but he ends up being strapped to a bed with the potion being infused onto him and he slowly turns back to normal. And although he's regained his humanity, the curse is not over yet because his reflection on the mirror is still opaque. The only way that Carlos regains his full-fledged humanity is that he and the rest of the rangers defeat Count Nocturne. Alpha 6 receives news that Cassie and Justin are in the park fighting against Count Nocturne and the Piranatrons. So TJ, Cassie, and Justin shift into Turbo, suit up, morph up, and join their friends in battle against Count Nocturne and the Piranatrons. They fight with all their might, and the fight choreography, as you can expect, is so glorious! Even when Carlos tries to have a go at attacking Count Nocturne, he still feels like he's being thrown around like a rag doll, but he still has the support of his friends and ends up joining them in shooting Count Nocturne with their cannon. But since this is Power Rangers, we all know what that means. In Power Rangers Turbo, it's time for the torpedoes to be fired, and Hilary Shepard Turner is absolutely brilliant as Diva Talk. She's an absolute legend as this villainess. The way she was able to have that intensity and that manic anger and absolutely great sense of power about her while still being so campy is just so brilliant. And I felt every bit of it. So the torpedoes get fired, and what we have here is the torpedoes landing on Count Nocturne and an extreme close-up of his grotesque face, which is just completely scary and completely intimidating. It left me with goosebumps and the hair on my skin just standing on end at how terrifying he really is when he grows. But when the going gets tough, the tough get going as the rangers end up summoning their Megazord. And this Megazord versus monster fight between the Turbozord versus Count Nocturne in his huge giant form was absolutely brilliant. The tension that's present, the struggle for the rangers to defeat this demonically vampiric creature is absolutely palpable. Even when Count Nocturne urges Carlos to give in to his vampiric ways, Carlos never gives up. And even when Count Nocturne thrashes and crashes and bashes 
the Turbo Zord. The Turbo Rangers do not give up as they also summon the Turbo Mega Zord to help out their rescue Zord. With their plan be in action, they continue to battle against Count Nocturne even when he ends up just beating them to a pulp and even headbutting them and hammering them nearly to bits. Even when Carlos is at his weak point, he ends up not giving up because he now has the courage to fully fight against Count Nocturne with some help from his friends and regain his full-fledged humanity. So with the Mega Turbo Zord and the Rescue Zord combined, they're back in action with their sword, slice up Count Nocturne's hammer, and finish him once and for all complete with the explosion. This was definitely an exciting Zord versus monster fight because we get to see Count Nocturne at his most sadistic and his most cruel and his most ruthless. The way he was able to use various weapons and even his bare hands to try to one-up all the rangers makes him one of the most terrifying yet most awesome Power Rangers Turbo Monsters to ever grace, let alone accumulate the screen. That is just how much Count Nocturne wins in my eyes. He wins in the horror department. He wins in the action department and he wins in the epic department. And the way he ends up being defeated by the Turbo Power Rangers was glorious, complete with an explosion and complete with the combined Rescue Zord and Mega Turbo Zord standing triumphantly, much to Diva Tox's ire and rage to the point where she blames it all on Elgar and her cronies for such an idea that ended up going awry. With Carlos back to normal, it's time for him and his friends to enjoy what Bulk and Skull have released. But they're not doing vampires anymore, they're featuring werewolves. And we also have a cute moment with Carlos and Justin play scaring Bulk and Skull with their fangs, which I thought was absolutely hilarious. And once again, the brotherly chemistry was quite sweet between Carlos and Justin. Yes, Bulk is excited at their growing prospects now that their monster movie marathon is a hit. But once they have to sign the papers demanding those reels, they see a werewolf looking gentleman, which ends up terrifying both Bulk and Skull, but also befuddling Lieutenant Stone in terms of their reactions. And it was just an absolutely endearingly fun ending that made me laugh and smile with glee and made me thoroughly satisfied. It goes to show you that Power Rangers Turbo's Carlos and the Count was one of the best episodes that this particular season had to offer. When it shone, it definitely shone. And this was an episode that proved just that. It managed to be full of tension, action, and a whole lot of thrills that made me stand and sit at the edge of my seat just wanting to know what on earth happens next. It is just that amazing in terms of all the action that's going on, both the physical as well as the psychological in terms of Carlos' changes of state as well as his full on losing himself to him being a vampire. That is just how awesome Carlos and the Count really is. And Count Nocturne was absolutely brilliant as a monster of the week. How his intimidation and his overall determination to destroy not only the Rangers, but make Carlos his slave is both scary and absolutely exciting. And not just in terms of destroying Carlos alone, but also wanting the rest of the rangers be his vampire slaves. So therein lies the reason as to why I love Carlos and the Count from Power Rangers Turbo. It definitely shows Power Rangers Turbo at its very best, especially bolstered by the presence of TJ, Carlos, Ashley and Cassie aiding alongside Justin to be the current breed of Turbo Power Rangers. I definitely salute Carlos and the Count for what it was able to offer as a superb Power Rangers Turbo episode 
and definitely one of the best Halloween episodes that the Power Rangers franchise, especially from the Saban era, had to offer. And for those of you who caught Power Rangers Turbo's Carlos and the Count, whether you caught it on Fox Kids when you were younger, or rewatched it as an adult, what'd you think of it? Did you feel like this was the best episode that Power Rangers Turbo had to offer, if not one of the best? Did you also appreciate the tension, action, and thrills this particular Power Rangers Turbo episode had to offer? Did you also feel like this was the episode that made you love Power Rangers Turbo so much? And by that extent, the existence of TJ, Carlos, Ashley, and Cassie accompanying Justin as the Turbo Power Rangers? Or did you feel like this episode was not really to your liking? Please let me know in the comments below. Well, that's it for my tribute to Power Rangers Turbo's Carlos and the Count. Yes, it is sweet sorrow to depart this year's set of Halloween episode tributes, lookbacks, with this particular episode, but this was definitely the best way that I could wrap this year's lookbacks and tributes, let alone tributes to Halloween episodes that I've enjoyed, especially from the Power Rangers franchise, because as I argue, the Power Rangers franchise is always at its best when it tackles not only the Halloween episodes, but also some scary episodes. It would have been fantastic for me to have tackled, like, let's say, the Psycho Rangers, let alone talked about them, or even talked about other scary episodes from the Saban era of the Power Rangers franchise, but I'm pretty sure that those opportunities will come eventually, especially when I count down some of my favorite Power Rangers episodes of all time, whether it be from Mighty Morphin to Wild Force, generally the Saban era seasons. And maybe I might end up tackling some of the Disney era seasons because the Saban and Disney era seasons are the ones that I truly care for. So I really have to hand it to Carlos and the Count for making this year's Power Rangers Halloween special tributes go out with a bang. And tune in next time for my review of a classic film from 1994, Pulp Fiction. So until then, good night everybody and have yourselves a happy Halloween and may the power protect you all.